Hi, I'm Kara Dillo. Welcome to today's Petals and Stems episode. I am the farmer florist at the Petals and Stems garden. Now I've just returned from the garden. I've cut all my flowers, filler, and foliage for today. And we are going to go inside into the shop and let them soak in water for about two hours. And then we're going to divide them up into individual flower types. We're going to strip the stems um, and then we're going to start to make a couple different versions of some beautiful arrangements. Right now, I just want to show you what I decided to pick this morning and why. So we cut three buckets worth today of flowers. Um, it is June 25th, so to give you an idea of what our season is, we're early summer. So in our first bucket, what we've chosen are multicolors of the gladiolas. Gladiolas I cut with just a couple blooming flowers on the bottom color all the way up um, and color being exposed toward the tops. We also have some Black Eyed Susan on the right and some other little coneflower varieties here. Um, and this may be different in your zone, your growing zone, what is available to you. Um, and then we also have some more gladiolas. You can see some bright orange ones in the back, pinks, peaches, whites, and yellows. I also chose to cut out some uh, echinacea today. Now something is getting my echinacea petals. So I decided to salvage the, the heads of them and use them as uh, just visual interest. So I just pulled the petals off and we're gonna use some of those, we'll clean them up. We're gonna use some of those orange little seed heads for, for visual interest. I also had a little bit of tick seed. Um, it's coming, it's a little early for it to really be in full swing in my garden, but it'll add a nice little accent for an arrangement. And then I just cut down a ton of mint because it is just really growing vigorously um, and it makes a fantastic filler. This is actually a spearmint and a mint and I like the one mint because it has a little purple accent to it. And then the spearmint is, is kind of green, yellow, crispy, smells fantastic. And then over here we have of course, some Queen Anne's lace, a little more tick seed, the last of a few pink bachelor buttons, um, some other varieties of Black Eyed Susans, which I didn't mention. We also have some of that in the first bucket. And then I decided to go with some playful things. So at the end of the spring, early summer, some of our spring things are going into seed. So I picked some flax seed branches and I also picked some nigella or love in a mist seed pods and so they'll offer just some some super fun colorful interest texture to our our arrangements today so i don't really have a plan for how this is all going to go together um we are donating all our arrangements most of our arrangements to the power flower project out of Asheville, north carolina um, we might have a few up for um, a donate, quote unquote, donation sale at the garden. Um, we'll talk more about that later. So let's go inside, get these flowers cooled off, and we'll start to get to work. All right, so we are in the shop and we have gotten our buckets out and they've been soaking for two hours. And so now we're going to start to organize everything and decide a general idea of what our arrangements are going to look like. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that pretty quickly. And as we do that, we're gonna go ahead and strip about three quarters of the leaves off because we want all foliage and flowers above the water line. Okay. Gladiolas will be our centerpiece 
called Showstopper. Um, it has the most kind of pop and power to the arrangement. Um, our sea buds, our sea pods will offer some filler and some interest, and then our other flowers will all be just be filler, and then our mint will add some of that filling, that green. Um, and then we also talked about the echinacea, the purple cornflower seed pods or seed heads being another piece of interest. So I'm just going to make one or two. We're going to fill it in, kind of talk about how to do it, what we're looking for, and then we'll do the rest a little quicker. I'm going to go ahead and start with the color palette I'm looking at. Um, another thing I, I, I did is I stripped the, the flower stems was just looking for flower quality, stem quality, um, any bug or um, blemishes on the plant itself, and kind of clean that up. Um, it was pretty time consuming. I don't know that I would do the Nigella seed pods this late in the season again. Um, I don't know that they were worth my time. So we're gonna go ahead and start with a gladiola with some pink and some variegated uh, crimson, and we're gonna add one of a solid color that really complements it nicely. Um, I did my math, I have 17 gladiolas, so I'm going to do about two or three per arrangement. So I think for this one, we'll make it a big, really big and beautiful one, using up a lot of our stuff. And we'll go ahead and go ahead and do three gladiolas there. Gladiolas are quite top heavy. Sometimes they're nice just to, to sell individually, so it might be a place to just go ahead and wrap them up, put them in a bucket, and do that with all your gladiolas if you have a whole lot. They are a little tricky to, to arrange. But either way, because of this color palette, I'm going to go in and grab a couple bits of my Jella. Love the mist mat. It's a pretty long, it's going to be a pretty spiky long bouquet, so I'm going to go ahead and choose some, some taller pieces. And I'm looking at my flower line kind of being up here. Well, I'm, most of my interest is going to flow around the flowers. Um, so we're going to go ahead and put a couple big pieces in. And then we go ahead and start adding a little bit of filler, some color. So I have a, just a few of my late season mums. So I'm going to go ahead, or I'm sorry, special buttons. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and use these up for the arrangement. So we want to be really consistent standard, or arrangement by arrangement, but we don't have to be accurate and precise and perfect on every one. We're going to have a nice hole that you can kind of just turn and fill in here. Gladiolas are a little bit tricky because I don't want to cover up a lot of this flower, but later on I will come in and just kind of um, accentuate them here. This is the hardest part for me, is just holding it appropriately enough. So I'm going to add a few more Nigella just around the sides there. And because these are so spiky, I tend to like to add also a little bit of that horizontal interest, right? So if the eye is constantly being drawn up, it can become a little bit boring to the eye. So it's nice to have some very whimsy things kind of bobbling out to the side. Again, that's your, your personal style and choice. Again, I don't think I'm going to do the Nigella again this late in the season, but what's done is done. Gladiolas always start to spin around, just kind of like a kid, you're like, keep facing forward. And I have some lower pieces I can kind of stick around like that. Again, so I'm going to finish using up my bachelor buttons. And now from there, I'm going to go ahead and start to fill in around. So I'm going to go ahead and begin with the mint. I'm kind of looking at the angles I'm working at, dimensions I'm offering the eye. This is almost like a symphony. You want the eye to kind of constantly be being surprised by something it didn't expect. And sometimes that can be just a little bit tricky. 
Again, you want to be really efficient at this part. Um, you want to really move along. So I'm just going to take some time to really make this first one quite lovely. So we're going to come into the side, add a few pieces of Queen Anne's lace. I don't want to use all of this up on my first management, but. And I'm thinking of it sitting in a vase. Um, I'm thinking of it being twined. What it's going to look like to the person receiving it or the person buying it. And you can want them to really see it on their, their shelf. So I'm going to add a little bit of um, Black Eyed Susan just to add a pop or splash of color. Also to accentuate, again, the vertical and the horizontal dimensions. And I did pick some that are in partial stages of The biggest thing is, this is not a great example, is I want the top of their stem to be fairly firm. And if it's not, you might, you can't guarantee that in a day or two, it's not gonna droop in a vase in someone's house. And they don't feel like they got their money worth. So we want to feel like we have firm stems and they'll hold up for a good week or two, or at least five days minimum. But I really grabbed a whole lot of long stems today because I knew I was working for glads. So, really know what your centerpiece is gonna be so you can make sure you accentuate that with your filler. When you're done, again, your hope would be that you're being more efficient than not. So I'm going to call that that. I have a little bit of almost everything in there. I might just top it off with a couple little sprigs of the flat seed just to give it a little bounciness. And I can start to feel in my hand that the arrangement is quite full. And that's about time to call it. Okay. So if I were going to market, I would call that probably at a $15 to $20 bouquet just because the glads are so big and so high. Some of that's going to depend on the market that you go to. But I'm going to go ahead and find my shortest stem. And I'm going to chop those there. So chopping the stems does take the height down quite a bit, and that's a-okay. Okay. And I just double check that your your leaves are still going to be below that water line. And that's a good reason to overcompensate on how much you pull the leaves off. I tend to undercompensate that and then pay for it in the end. So I'm going to go ahead and twine that. This flower's been sitting on the water for a little while. Start to get a little bit brushed. Um, you don't have to do them all at once. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap that up. I'm going to hold those stems so that they can maintain their dimensional interest. What a good snug tie. And then pop that right back in some good cold water. After you do a few of these, you definitely want to come back in your cooler or a nice cool space with good airflow. Maybe some fresh water for another 24 hours or so until you're ready to give them away, sell them, display them. So let's go ahead and do the rest of these and we'll be good to go.
have made all our arrangements, we have twined them up, they've been soaking in water. We do want them to continue to soak in water until they are ready for delivery and freshening that water is not a bad idea. I keep it cool, keep the flowers to kind of slow their aging down. Um, we don't want to shock them, so we want to give them ice cold water. And hot water will actually accelerate, warm, too warm water will accelerate their blooming. So we've made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine ish, ten ish arrangements. And one final step we're going to do is to put some craft paper around them. Um, I often uh, trade goods with colleagues, um, friends, and what we have today is just some actual used craft paper. I'm kind of excited about seeing how it looks. It has odd cuts to it. It's quite wrinkled, um, but I like that kind of country store farm quality to it. So we're gonna wrap our arrangements up in this, making sure that the craft paper does not touch the water. Now the craft paper is definitely not the right size, but we're gonna go ahead and size that. So that will be a little more time consuming than just having your pre-ordered sleeves. We also do that as well. Now the idea of craft paper is to kind of help hold the arrangement up, also feature its colors, um, and just to kind of protect it as well as you're moving it around. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the craft paper just below the flower line, and then I'm gonna choose kind of where my best color arrangement is. And I'm just gonna kind of do a bit of a U-shaped cut. And again, if you have dozens of arrangements to do, you don't want to do this, it will take forever, but we're just doing it as a fun little project today. So once I've done that, I'm simply going to take the paper and just kind of wrap it around and kind of move it down a little bit each time. I'm kind of bunching it at the bottom. Again, it's actually probably too long even, but I'm okay with that. I'm going to give it a little tuck. I'm just going to wrapping it there. I have tape and a stapler. I'm actually just going to tape this guy for ease today. She hasn't been playing with the tape, so it is all bunched up. <laughs> this would be a great do with your kids project, have them help do this part if they're old enough. And now you're brown back. <laughs> I'm going to slide that up just a little bit because again, I don't want it to be in the waterline. I might have to just make sure my waterline is not too high, just enough for the stems to be getting some water. That paper will wick, wick the water up. I can see it's already doing it a little bit. No problem. And then we're going to take one of our nonprofit cards and I'm going to staple that to the front at another junction of where I put that craft paper. Just to add another little bit of security. Great. I think that looks fantastic. Has a nice rustic quality to it. One of the crinkle of the paper. So we're going to go through all of our items and do that individually. Eight beautiful gladiola arrangements. One, two, four, five, six, seven, eight. A good half a day's work, but I think the effort was worth it. And we're donating all of these to the Power Flower Project out of Asheville, North Carolina. So thanks again for joining us today. Um, all in all, probably about three to four hours of actual labor to make about eight arrangements. Um, every time we do this, it does get more efficient. Uh, 
We could have easily cut this into two days work. We could have harvested today, let the plants sit for overnight, pull them out of the garage, and then um, we could have easily spent just a couple hours first thing in the morning tomorrow doing that, doing all of what we did today. So uh, pretty easy to space out as well, as long as they're sitting in cold water in it, a cool place. You can see that their tips are starting to bend and hopefully as they sit vertically and soak up more water, um, those tips will hopefully straighten out. Please like, subscribe, and share this video. Please leave me questions and comments, um, and I will get back to you. Thanks again. Again, this is Cara Dillo with Petals and Stems Garden. Watch out for our next episode. We'll see you soon.